In today's video, we will be talking about one of the welterweight greats of the UFC in the 2000s, Matt Hughes. Hughes was for many at that time the greatest welterweight champion and also one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. He is easily in the top five welterweight champions of the UFC list and was conferred with the UFC Hall of Fame award for his contributions to the sport. Hughes is now on the road to recovery after his fatal accident due to which he had lost his consciousness. So what made Hughes one of the best welterweights of his time and what can we learn from his real life survivor story? So without wasting any time, let's get straight to the countdown. Number four, strong wrestling credentials paved the way for champ status in the UFC. Matt Hughes, prior to joining MMA, had an excellent background in wrestling. He is a former two-time state wrestling champion and was known to be extremely effective and dominant on the ground. He made his MMA debut in Extreme Fighting Challenge promotion in 1998 against Eric Snyder, where Hughes showed a glimpse of his raw power by lifting Snyder up and powerfully slamming him on the ground, from which the opponent was not able to get up from. He would later be called the Slam Specialist, as the slam became a very important move in his skill set. He would later face Dennis Hallman, who would hand Hughes his first loss in MMA by submitting him via a standing guillotine chokehold in the first 20 seconds of the first round. A year later, Hughes was then signed up by the UFC. He made his debut against Valery Ignatov and won the fight via unanimous decision. He would once again square up against Dennis Hallman, who gave Hughes his first loss in MMA. The fight started in a similar manner to their last meeting, where Hughes lifted Hallman in an attempt to slam him on the ground, but Hallman grabbed hold of his arm, out of which he converted into an armbar to once again submit Hughes in the first round. By this time, Hallman had Hughes' number, as he was the opponent who had managed to defeat Hughes twice in MMA. But Hughes managed to rally back with some wins, after which he was awarded a title shot by the UFC against the welterweight champion Carlos Newton. Hughes overpowered the champion with his strength and in his trademark style, lifted the champion to slam him on the ground. But like his fight against Hallman, Hughes was susceptible to submission moves by his opponent while attempting the slam. And in his fight against Newton, he got into a triangle choke where Hughes was almost on the verge of passing out from it until he viciously slammed the champion to knock him out in the second round of the fight. The win ensured Hughes became the welterweight champion of the UFC. He would defend the welterweight championship against Sakurai, where he pummeled the challenger with his incredible ground and pound for the majority of the fight until Sakurai had taken too much damage from the fight and got TKO'd in the fourth round. Hughes would then meet the former champion Carlos Newton at UFC 34 for his second title defense. The rematch was a fairly one-sided affair as the champion Hughes was in cruise control of the fight by taking Newton down and keeping him on the ground with side control and pounding him at any giving opportunity. The fight was over in the fourth round as Hughes finished Newton with some heavy strikes via the crucifix position to get the victory via TKO. Hughes by now had established himself as a top dog of the welterweight division with these victories. Hughes by now had cemented himself as one of the best MMA fighters during that period. Hughes would then face one of the top welterweights of his time, BJ Penn, at UFC 46 for the defense of his title. Penn started on the front foot and submitted Hughes via a rear naked choke in the first round of the fight to win the welterweight title. That loss meant Hughes had to relinquish his title to Penn. But due to some disputes between the UFC and Penn, the title had to be vacated and the UFC was looking for a new welterweight champion. Obviously, the probable candidates for the title were Hughes and rising welterweight GSP. They both faced each other for the title at UFC 65, with many favoring GSP to win the title as he was the hottest prospect in the UFC at that time. George St. Pierre is loved by all in his home country of Canada and tons of American fans especially as he has gained it, the popularity on the Ultimate Fighter 4. But Hughes, being the more experienced out of the two, showed his vast experience by taking GSP down and in trademark fashion, controlling the opponent on the ground. He would upset the odds by landing some heavy strikes and submitting GSP via an armbar at the end of the first round to become the welterweight champion of the UFC for the second time. 
That victory meant Hughes still had a lot left in him and the championship victory proved that. He would then start his second reign as welterweight champion by facing Trigg in a rematch again for the title. The fight is remembered as one of the greatest comebacks in MMA, as Hughes was caught by an illegal strike to the groin, as the ailing Hughes in his wait for the referee to intervene was caught by Trigg with some strikes who capitalized on the referee's error. He took advantage of the situation by inflicting some ground and pound and getting the back of Hughes via rear naked choke. Hughes valiantly broke the hold after a mighty struggle of two minutes and then lifted Trigg and ran to the other side of the fence and slammed him. He then finished Trigg with some heavy ground and pound and completed the comeback by gaining victory via TKO. All of this happened in the first round and many still didn't recover from the excitement of the fight. UFC president Dana White labeled the fight as the greatest fight in MMA history. What a comeback, folks. Hughes would then face Joe Riggs, a fight which was later turned into a non-title fight due to Riggs not being able to make weight on time. Hughes, though, made quick work of Riggs by submitting him via Kimura lock in the first round of the fight. He would compete in another non-title fight, this time against Hoist Gracie. The Gracie family, renowned for their BJJ credentials in MMA, would pose a threat to Hughes, with Hoist being one of them. In the fight, though, Hughes would be the superior wrestler as he kept Gracie on the ground and attempted an armbar in which Gracie allegedly broke his arm. Learning that Gracie wouldn't tap out, Hughes got the back of Hoist and reined in some heavy punches until the referee stopped the fight at the end of the first round. Even though it was a catchweight non-title bout, the victory was one of Hughes' best. Number two the final end of Hughes' Hall of Fame career. After several title defenses, Hughes would then go on to face former welterweight champion BJ Penn, who had defeated Hughes in their first meeting for the title. The fight was set for UFC 63, and the fight started with Penn being the more assertive fighter, as he landed a lot of strikes in the first two rounds. But in the third round, Penn looked out of breath and affected by a rib injury. Hughes capitalized on that by finishing Penn via TKO with some customary ground and pound in the third round. Hughes had got one back on Penn for the previous title loss, but he had many opponents aiming for his belt, with GSP being the next in line. He arrived on the octagon and raised the anticipation for that fight by saying he was not impressed by Hughes' performance over Penn and will look to fight him in the future. I'm not impressed by your performance and I look forward to, to fight you in the near future. Hughes was unimpressed with George's opinion and termed it as harsh. In fact, George later admitted that it was very low class of him to say that and says it was rather a misunderstanding from his end. So at UFC 65, Hughes would defend his welterweight title against GSP. And this time, the Canadian was out of the blocks right from the start as he dominated the fight on the feet and dropped Hughes with a Superman punch at the end of the first round. But the bell saved him. Hughes was somewhat rocked by the excellence of GSP and would look to mount a comeback in the second round. But GSP continued in the same vein and dropped Hughes on the floor with a perfectly timed head kick and finished the fight with some heavy elbows in the second round for a TKO finish. That would be the end of Hughes' reign as champion and most probably the passing of the guard to GSP as the next great welterweight. And in some ways it was, as GSP would go on to become the greatest welterweight of all time. Hughes, though, at the end of his career, was coach of the Ultimate Fighter series against Rich Franklin. He coached on two separate occasions, the other one being against former welterweight champion Matt Serra. Hughes would face Serra at the twilight of his career and earn a decision victory over him to end their rivalry in the tough season. Hughes announced his retirement in 2013 and has left a mark as one of the greatest welterweights in MMA with seven title defenses in the UFC. Now, time for the fun fact. Fun fact. After MMA, Matt would appear in several TV shows and movies, such as Uncaged with Matt Hughes and The Takedown with Matt Hughes, where one of his shows were awarded for Sportsman Choice Awards in 2015. Number one, the real life survivor. Hughes suffered a life-threatening accident in 2017 when he was driving through a railroad until tragedy happened as Hughes was struck by a passing train at the passenger side of the vehicle. That accident caused Hughes a brain bleed and he would have to spend 19 days in a medically induced coma. But being the real life warrior that he is, Hughes would overcome adversity and battle back from the brink of death. He had lost his consciousness and movement and had to relearn everything from the ground up. And the man has defied all odds and is able to function as a normal human being once again. Well, if that doesn't inspire you, nothing will. 
Such stories exemplify the greatness of Matt Hughes and would make him as one of the greatest figures in MMA. And by this, we have come to the end of our video today, but before leaving, we would like to know, is Matt Hughes one of the best welterweights of all time? And what do you think about his life-inspiring story of his accident? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.